Good morning, everyone. And I think Ed Bully and I got ourselves in a very odd situation today. Right, Ed? <laughs> bumper on. I have no idea and at the same time this isn't even a real Lycan. Right. Ed, why do you have this car? <laughs> how, how, what did ha like what happened? I wanted a chandelier for <laughs> your ceiling my garage and I thought it'd be super cool if I could find a Mercy engine block. I used to have a Gallardo engine block okay. that was a coffee table and yeah. the bare block only weighs 30 40 pounds. Now a Mercy one's not quite as refined as Wait, the, it's only, I'm sorry, it's only 30 or 40 pounds? Like yeah, the bare, the bare block? aluminum block. That's pretty amazing, like actually. Nothing. So, I, yeah, I literally just put a shipping label when I sold it on it and shipped it FedEx. Okay. I thought I would, you know, try to find one, but nobody really had a blown up Mercy block. Right. So this guy called me and he had this. Okay. Freddie Tavares calls and says, hey, this guy, Sam Hart in the UK, has a full powertrain out of another one of the 03 Mercies, just like his car that was used in Fast and Furious. And the one that went to Fast and Furious Live, which was like a stadium show right. that followed Fast and Furious 8, that w was a total flop. Yeah, uh, <laughs> which they, is kind of surprising in a way. you think some people would go see it, but I guess not. Exactly, so one of the 2003 Mercies, just like this one. Oh, well, here's Freddy's. <laughs> Literally, the one he restored. Exactly, so I helped Freddie buy this car, which was kind of the hero car about a year ago, just over a year ago. And he actually brought it by here in nowhere near this condition uh, when he brought it back from Los Angeles. And so the other one, they took all the Mercy stuff out and they put a five-speed manual Jaguar transmission and a Jag six-cylinder motor in the back. So I'm like, okay. Uh, but so he has all this stuff. And I was like, well, I don't really need all of like a functional thing. Right. That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for me. So he's like, well, I get in touch with this guy. Got the transmission, drive shafts, but it's all been sitting like in a shipping container in the UK for years. Yeah, years. you can really yeah, tell yeah, exactly. it's been in there. And so I was like, well, I don't really need that. And he said, well, I'll tell you what, if you buy this stuff, I'll give you something else. <laughs> that thing. <laughs> exactly. Have you heard of the Lycan Hypersports? Well, sure. And the one that jumped through the buildings, apparently. Exactly. It was not CG at all. Right. <laughs> so apparently there were like five or six that they built for Fast and Furious 7. Right. But all of those contractually had to be destroyed. Right. And so the. There was a real one, which is still in the W Motors showroom and has like a banged up front bumper that was used in the film. It's essentially the pretty one that <clears throat> exactly. they kept around yeah, for the shots one, and Yeah, stuff. so I think when they were driving it through the, the apartment, that was the real car. But then when they did Fast and Furious Live, they authorized them to use the W Motors Lycan molds and make two more. One was a drivable car on top of a Boxster chassis. The other was this one. Okay, we're gonna walk through this thing together as a tag team. First things first, the first thing I noticed was the headlights are just stickers. It is the most <laughs> underwhelming thing in the planet. But real <laughs> headlights have 15 carats worth of diamonds. As you do. Also right here, this trim is just some cheap like fiberglass or I whatever it's vinyl. it is. I, it's, yeah. I think it's one I feel like you could mold. peel this right here. And uh, I mean, everything is so brittle because at the end of the day, this thing was made to launch out of basically a rocket or a train right. to shoot it out like the human cannonballs. <laughs> it in this hull of an airplane okay and the nose kind of opened slowly okay and then the car shot out so it was on these like trophy truck shocks so it could land so get a handle it in the air did you ever go to disney yeah. uh do you remember the lights motor action show so it was this really oh, yeah. neat stunt yeah. show stunt they show did, and I'm pretty sure they got inspiration from that because okay. they used um, little Opals with Yamaha bike motors in them, uh -huh. and they were just shells like this, no headlights, no nothing. <laughs> So 
I think Fast and Furious came in and was like, we can do that too, but you can only watch family for so long. Cars were never supposed to be sold. Well, uh, I'm pretty sure this one was definitely not supposed to be sold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, if you look at everything, the wheels are cheap. Yeah. I mean, look at this, guys. Like, just, <laughs> just yeah, no really effort together. involved because yeah. this is a 50 footer, 100 footer Panels, from the stands. Yeah, exactly. It has hood latches for the doors because the entire door basically yeah. just comes off. So it should open like this. Yeah, but it does not. It actually, you just take it off. Yeah, you know, imagine sort of. going to the grocery store and you just go, <laughs> and you just take the whole thing off. <laughs> and you're going to see that internally in the car it's just framing yep. there's nothing else now a real lichen is built on top of a roof ctr3 chassis which is kind of a cayman boxster derivative for us americans so anyway. the, yeah. the notion of a car that like like a shell like this could fit on a boxster is not that far-fetched right. so that's what the other one is and supposedly it's in either Saudi Arabia or Dubai. The guy, Sam wasn't sure, but he had heard from the pre the guy who owns it, and he's missing a few of the panels. I mean, Lycan says there's under 10. Well, there's definitely a reason why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's seven of them. They were $3.4 million. They have an Crazy. 806 horsepower, 3.8 flat six, derived from the Porsche motor, modified by Roof. Probably the 997 variant. Like, look at this right here. It's literally yeah. tape. There's a lot of tape. There's a lot of, and most of the edges are cracked. I don't know if that was from some hard landings or poor storage. But to raise the car up to make it roll, they yeah. have wood Sam here. Built these, uh, yeah, shocks out of wood. We got our beautiful hose clamps keeping some stuff yeah, so together too. There was a mount for the rear bumper that cracked here. So these oh, both okay. broke off. So there are pieces of scrap metal in there that they had used, but I'd love to get the bumper to hang right, but I have no clue. Let's try and figure it out. So you know when you buy a project car and you're like, this is how it's gonna look. This is how it ends up. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's one of these things where you get this in a shipping container from the UK and it's like, well, what else did you expect? It also doesn't turn. So there's no movement of the front wheels. So we so have, you to have to like drag it do down this. the driveway with the golf cart on go jacks. Well, let's like at least frame up the rear bumper to see what it would kind of sort of look like. Okay. And it's actually very heavy. Yeah. Uh, this is very heavy for my chicken arms, you know? So, well, right. I think if we started by whatever these mounting holes were, just run some wire ties through them. And let's pull this bolt out. Yeah. So if you've ever wondered what a movie car really looks like for stunts and stuff like that, especially like this for a live show, this is how bare bones it is inside the bumper itself where Ed is messing with it. But look at this. It's basically mesh you would find at a hardware store. Then you have your metal frame that would just bolt up to this and then bam, it comes right out. And then essentially just zip ties and Bondo and Allen keys. Nothing substantially hard to take apart, but makes it pretty fragile. Yeah, it's literally like an Ikea desk or something. Don't let your dreams be dreams. <laughs> There you have it, folks. Drive away, brand new, never used. Well, now it kind of sort of looks like a lichen. Yeah, I mean, spit an image. The <laughs> Really? This is the poster car of the century. That's it. That's <laughs> so crazy, because since it was made to jump, it sits so... <laughs> but yeah, sticker, sticker. Pretty sure it's like a plastic badge right here. Yep. Yeah, have you taken the door off yet? Yeah. Oh, sick. Uh, I took the other one off. I don't know if I took this one off. I'd actually like to get it off. It's not in one piece. <laughs> yeah, the window's moving, everything's moving. So like this this is sliding as Ed is trying to take the door off. Because it was just glued on pieces of wood <laughs> in here. I think it might be rusted together. Wouldn't be surprised being in that ship that whole time. Hey. Oh, well, hey. okay. Got it? Oh, there's some Ooh, debris nice. fit in there. Yep. Yeah, thank you for 
I will. I'm gonna take it for a spin. So this is the inside of it, as you see. This is all metal framing. That's all it is. This thing was made to be shot out of a cannon, essentially. And nowhere to sit at all. You can tell where the steering wheel might have gone. Not the most comfortable ride in the world, because uh, you can't even sit. Like, there's nowhere to go. Was this car ever supposed to have a person in it? Or was it just so. a model? I think it's just a stunt prop. So as you see in here, there's that piece of wood suspension to keep the car rolling and lifted so you can push it around. But if you look at that suspension setup, it's actually very intricate. There's a lot going on because they needed that travel for it to land and bounce. But the problem was is the reason the stunt was only done one time was because it bounced so hard after landing that it could maybe hit the audience. So I hear that's important. But here's the inside. I hate to break it to you, but this is not one of those YouTube projects where somebody says, I'm gonna rebuild the total supercar. It, unless you do an entire chassis swap and everything. Well, and that's, it, it appears that's what's going to happen. Which um, is cool, and I wanna see it, but what a commitment. Me. It ain't for me either. No, but, I still have uh, trouble with an old Nissan. <laughs> There's these perfect spider webs all oh, yeah, over it. Yeah, I can't yeah, wait to find my bites later. <laughs> Just like the 918, you get out. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's unbelievable like how seeing a prop in person and it's so underwhelming. <laughs> it's, it's really cool to show what show business is, right? It's neat to see how much work goes into doing one moment of entertainment for the masses. You always hear about the separate stunt cars. You always hear about how they have to build multiple cars and all that, but this is a perfect example of what you're seeing in a wide shot, if that makes sense, where they have to do a stunt, where the car has to jump, do something crazy and you'll never notice it because the car is moving so fast on screen or they use computer generated imagery to erase all these bolts and erase all these rivets and look, scratch right here i don't even want it that's probably from the jump but <laughs> this is what gets you this is what makes you go this is a problem i can see it working i oh, know me too and i would love to see it working because then you actually get a movie prop that's supposed to be a car be a car, not just a rolling fiberglass shell, essentially. But at the end of the day, Mr. Ed, thanks for the experience. Always it's been great. It. Make sure to check out Ben Wiki, awesome guys, and I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll see you guys next time, and I'm not driving home in this. So.